Let's face it, if it weren't for the Antetokounmpo surname, would Thanos still be rocking an NBA jersey? This isn't about hate, it's about separating the hype from the hardwood reality. As long as his brother is the man, he gonna have a job. <laughs> he gonna have a job. He's not a bad player. Though. I know, I didn't say he was a bad player, but I'm saying they, know, they not- For job gonna, security. They got, for job security, that boy gonna always have a job as long as his brother's the man. <laughs> Thanasis, or should I say Thanasty, a nickname that he has earned. It's fitting for a guy who spends more time warming the bench than breaking his sweat on the court. But is he more than a Giannis hype man? Is there any substance to the notion that he's just the symbolic mascot the Bucks need to keep their all-star happy? Today, we're putting Thanasis under the microscope, dissecting his impact and answering the question, how bad is Thanasis Antetokounmpo actually? Stay tuned because we're about to unravel the mystery and maybe, just maybe, discover if Thanasis is more than a flashy name. Born in the basketball-rich city of Athens in 1992, Thanasis Antetokounmpo is no stranger to the court. He's sandwiched between Charles and Veronica's five sons. He's the middle child with a not-so-middle basketball journey. Now, they like to call themselves the Antetokounmpros and basketball runs in their veins. Brothers Costas and Alexander are making their mark. Costas is lighting it up for Panathinaikos, and Alexander is balling out for the Wisconsin Herd in the G League. The Antetokounmpo brothers are everywhere, but today we are talking about the Antetokounmpo who tends to linger in the shadows. Back in 2008, like his little bro Giannis, Thanasis took the first steps in youth club basketball with the junior teams of Philanakos, and slowly climbed the ranks making it to the senior team. The NBA dream started to take shape when he declared for the 2013 NBA Draft alongside Giannis. However, on the day of the withdrawal deadline, he decided to take a step back. Giannis, on the other hand, got the call from the Milwaukee Bucks as the 15th overall pick. And when Giannis' name was called out, Thanasis was by his side waving a Greek flag. Seems he already knew what was coming, but we'll get to that. A stint with the Delaware 76ers in the NBA G League was Thanos' next move. It was the proving ground, the place where he honed his skills, preparing for the big leagues, and the New York Knicks took notice. In the 2014 NBA Draft, the Knicks selected him with the 51st overall pick. Dreams turning into reality, or so it seemed. He suited up for the 2014 NBA Summer League in Knicks colors, putting up modest numbers that hinted at his potential. He averaged 3 points and 1.8 rebounds in 5 games. He was then acquired by the Westchester Knicks. The stats don't lie, and Thanasis made some noise. In 47 games, he averaged 13.9 points, 6.2 rebounds, 1.7 assists, 1.7 steals, and 1.7 blocks per game. Thanasis rejoined the Knicks for the 2015 NBA Summer League. He showed flashes of brilliance, 1.8 rebounds, and 1.2 blocks in 5 games. The Knicks later signed him, only to show him the door on October 23rd after three preseason games. Fast forward and Thanasis gets another shot at the NBA dream, signing a 10-day contract with the New York Knicks. Making his debut against the Phoenix Suns that very night, he dropped two points in a quick two-minute cameo. But as fate would have it, the Knicks opted not to extend his contract. Back to Westchester he went. The NBA dream was on pause, but Thanasis wasn't ready to throw in the towel just yet. With the road to the NBA looking bumpy, Thanasis decided to take his talents overseas. Signing with Morabak and Dora of the Liga ACB, he embraced a new challenge on European courts. In 2017, the prodigal son returned to Greece. He signed a two-year deal with his EuroLeague powerhouse, Panathinaikos. There, he showcased his skills on the top-tier stage of the Greek Basketball League. The man was back on familiar turf, and his impact was swift. The accolades started rolling in. He snagged the MVP title at the 2018 Greek All-Star Game. Panathinaikos clinched the Greek League Championship in June 2018, defeating Olympiakos. But the 2017-18 season would be Thanasis' playground. Not only did he secure the Greek League Championship, but he also earned the title of the league's most spectacular player. And then came July 2019, the turning point in his career. Thanasis Antetokounmpo penned a deal with the Milwaukee Bucks, reuniting with his brother Giannis. And this is where everything truly began. The signing. When the Bucks inked Thanasis, all eyes were on Giannis. The whispers were loud, suggesting that Giannis wanted his brother in the mix, right by his side. After all, isn't everything better when you got family around? 
But let's call a spade a spade. Thanos' presence stirred the pot. The initial justification was easy. The guy still had some NBA value, but the truth is, he has been more of a bench warmer than a rotational player, donning the title of a locker room guy for what feels like an eternity. But put yourself in Giannis' sneakers. If you could secure a million dollar payday for your brother and have him right there with you day in and day out, would you do it? Absolutely. Even if there might be a better fit on the court, the value of having a player who can navigate the emotional landscape and ego of the franchise superstar is undeniable. You see, Thanasis is known to be the one who challenges Giannis the most in the locker room. It's a unique dynamic. Giannis is more talented on the court, but Thanasis steps up behind the scenes. He maintains a delicate balance without upsetting the superstar, and there's a unique value in that. Now, would not having Thanasis on the Bucks roster make a difference? In the NBA, teams roll with a 15-player roster, but here's the catch. Not every player cuts the rotation. Over a season, you're looking at around 12 to 13 players getting substantial playing time. When the playoffs roll around, the number shrinks to 8 or 9. So having a 15th man who rarely hits the hardwood might not seem like a game changer. Take the Miami Heat, for instance. They made two finals runs with Udonis Haslam holding down the 15th spot. He wasn't a regular on the court, but a locker room anchor worth every penny. Let's zoom in on Thanasis. While he might not be the locker room maestro for the entire Buck squad, he does hold considerable sway over one key player, his younger brother. It's a dynamic every NBA team would exploit, keeping the franchise player happy by keeping family close. So perhaps the real scrutiny should be on the teams rather than the Ante de Compros. Over his four seasons with the Bucks, Thanasis has averaged a modest 2.6 points and 1.7 rebounds. Not exactly lighting up the scoreboard, but he is an NBA champion. And let's be real, he's not on the roster for his scoring prowess. This season, in 2023-24, he's clocking in at 0.6 points, 0.5 rebounds, 0.5 assists, in just 4.3 minutes per game. Offensive Limitations When it comes to creating offensive opportunities against a set defense, Thanasis falls short. Sure, he's got the athleticism for rebounding and screening, but the toolbox for generating offense is lacking. It's a critical gap that's preventing him from being a regular fixture in the rotation. Just like his brother Giannis, Thanasis isn't known for his prowess beyond the arc, shooting a mere 14.5% on shots taken from beyond three feet. He's more reliable within the restricted area, but here's the catch. Most of those looks aren't assisted by teammates. Thanasis might finish the open flush, but it's often as a result of orchestrated plays. Let's dig deeper into the intricacies of Thanasis Antetokounmpo's game, especially how he handles defensive pressure and one-on-one -on -one battles. It's here that the cracks in his offensive prowess become apparent. One glaring weakness in Thanasis' offensive game is his struggle to beat attentive pressure. When faced with one-on-one -on -one battles, defenders exploit his vulnerabilities. As a result, most of his field goal attempts come from his work on the offensive glass or orchestrated baseline plays. Making plays doesn't seem to be a strong suit, evidenced by a sky-high turnover percentage. He falls short when creating opportunities as defenders capitalize on his on-ball discomfort. On the bright side, he demonstrates prowess off the ball with well-executed cuts. This is a valuable skill for a team that often relies on isolation-heavy possessions, but his struggle lies in recognizing these openings when controlling the ball. Developing as a ball handler could open up new dimensions to his game. As Thanasis becomes more comfortable as a ball handler, his ability to recognize cutting teammates will improve and this will expand his isolation package. A confident ball handler can move freely, leveraging his greatest strength and therefore creating chaos on the court. Despite his current offensive limitations, Thanasis has a well-rounded play style. This positions him as a significant contributor in any second unit. Few players match his levels of effort and intensity coupled with textbook defensive fundamentals. The missing piece lies in developing his offensive skill set to a similar caliber. If he can achieve that, the league might soon find itself contending with not one, but two onto de Campos. As we navigate the twists and turns of the NBA, it's clear that Thanasis brings unmatched effort, intensity, and defensive fundamentals to the court. Does the intangible value of family bonds and locker room chemistry outweigh the on-court stats? It's a tough call, 
and opinions will vary. Now, before you go, don't forget to hit play on our next deep dive where we explore the intriguing question, how bad is Leangelo Ball actually? <laughs>